Welcome to lecture three. And today our focus is going to be on isomerism, isomers, and resonance structures. And we will finish up with going over Pogel 2. Um, let's review some concepts kind of for a warm up. And the first concepts I would like to review are one of your Pogel questions, PG1. There are additional questions number eight and, and number nine in your Pogel book. That would be on page 14. And we'll start there, and then that will lead us into what an isomer is. So if you go to your Pogel book on page 14, number eight says, determine the molecular formula. So they want you to determine the molecular formula. And then write a line, angle, um, skeletal structure for the following condensed structures. And then you need to decide um, the relationship. OK, so that's what they're asking if it's the same molecule. And this will be a common theme in organic chemistry. So you are given a condensed formula. OK, and you know one of the, your um, requirements in this class is to be able to convert that into um, a molecular formula. Let's go ahead and figure out what the molecular formula is. So how many carbons do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So did you get C8? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, how many hydrogens? Three, four, five, six, seven. Three times three is nine. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then how many oxygens? We have one oxygen. Okay, that's the molecular formula. And then you start here. We'll start with this carbon. And then we go to this carbon for our line angle drawing. And then we can go to this carbon. And this carbon is bonded to oxygen. And we know oxygen um, refers to bonds, two covalent bonds and two lone pairs. And we can go to this carbon. And then we can go to the next carbon. And then this is a branch. So it goes one, two, three. OK, so there is our line angle skeletal drawing. OK, let's go to the next one. CH3, CO, CH2, CH2, C, CH3. And there's three of them. OK, so our molecular formula. How many carbons? We have one, two, three, four, five, five, and then we have three. So five plus three is eight. And then how many hydrogens do we have? Three times 3 is 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then we have one oxygen, okay? And then we do the connectivity. So here's the first carbon, here's this one, and then it goes to this carbon, and then we have the that oxygen is connected to that carbon, so let's make a double bond oxygen, and then we go to this carbon, which is there. Then we can go to this carbon, which is there. Go to this carbon, and then you see that it has three. One, two, three. Now, before we go any further, how are these related? So we're going to learn what an isomer is. And um, isomers in your book are discussed on page 80 to 82. And an isomer has the same molecular formula, but different connectivity. 
Okay, so same molecular formula but different connectivity. So we have the same molecular formula. See, same molecular formula. So the first thing you always want to do is see if they have the same molecular formula. Um, if they do not have, if they don't have the same molecular formula, so if this is not the same, then you don't even have to go any further. If this is not the same, then your compounds in question are called different. They're just different molecules altogether. Okay, so the first thing you do is compare the molecular formula. If it's the same, then you go to another level. You're going to have to do this several times with stereoisomers and different types of isomers. But if they have the same molecular formula, they're going to be isomers of some sort. Okay. Um, now, the connectivity is different here. You see the ketone. That's another thing you need to start learning functional groups. This is a ketone. See, it has a carbonyl and it has no header atoms. No, um, not other than the oxygen carbonyl. So there's no other nitrogens or oxygen. So this is a ketone. Um, this is also a ketone. And the ketone is located on, when we do the naming, you find your longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons. And you're going to learn that in chapter three. We're going to learn how to do that. So this carbonyl here, this carbonyl is located on carbon number and you're going to learn that you go, you learn whether to go left or right, okay? In this case, you go one, two, three, four. Nope. We're going to start counting from the other end. And we go one, two, three, four, five, six, because we want to give that carbonyl the lowest number. So we have to go left to right once we find the longest chain. So that's a three. Um, the name of this compound is, and we'll learn this next chapter, um, 5 comma 5 dimethyl, for these two carbons here, dimethyl, and you'll learn that it's um, dash 3 hexan on, and that means the ketone is on the 3 carbon. Okay, now we name this one, and this is how I decide um, what kind of isomers they are. I name them. Okay, so we find our longest chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is five, five, because of these two carbons here, dimethyl, dimethyl, two, hexanone. So you see that this carbonyl here is on the three carbon and here it's on the two. This makes them constitutional isomers. Okay, they have the same molecular formula but they have different connectivity. And that makes them constitutional isomers. Um, let's look at the other molecule here. Um, it was CH3, CH, OH, CH2, CH2, C, CH3, 3. All right. What's its molecular formula? How many carbons do you have? Here we have 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8. How many hydrogens? 3 times 3 is 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, and then we have one oxygen. So do you see that this C18 is different than C16? Okay, so you would say these are different, this is a different compound altogether. Why? because it has a different molecular formula. And then, of course, the problem, and self to finish the problem, wanted you to go ahead and draw the skeletal. So we start here with this carbon, and then we go to this carbon. Now look, this has an OH, and this is where it's going to help if you learn your functional group. This group in brackets belongs to the carbon preceding it. 
This is going to be an alcohol, not a ketone. That's not a carbonyl, that's an alcohol. Then we go to the next carbon, make that one red. And then we go to the next carbon here. And then we go to the next carbon. And then we get three of these. One, two, three. And you'll learn one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. I count my carbons to make sure. And this, uh, the name of this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. We learn our longest chain. That's hexane. So this is two hexan O L, hexan all, not own, but O L because this is an alcohol. And then it's five comma five dimethyl. And that's the name of that compound, and it is a different compound because it has a different molecular formula. Okay, so by reviewing these, I'm hoping to for you to understand the expectation for isomers. Uh, let's do number nine. Number nine. Okay. Number nine in your book on page 14. All right. It says determine the molecular formulas and draw the line angle structures for the following condensed structures. Do these three structures resist? represent the same molecule. Okay, so um, I will let you work on that. Okay, so I'm actually not going to work that. Um, well, I guess I will. Okay, CH3, 3C, CH2, CH2, CO, CH2, CH, ER, CH, CH3, 2. Okay, so we do our molecular formula. We have three carbons here. Three. See how the other parentheses? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I've got 12 carbons. How many hydrogens? 3 times 3 is 9. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 plus 6. Mm, 23. How many oxygens? We have this oxygen. One oxygen. And then we also have a Br, halogen. There's our Br. Okay, so that's this molecular formula. Okay, let's do the other one down here. Um, CH3, 3, C, CH, 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 OH, CH2, CH, Br, CH, CH3, 2. Okay, so how many carbons? We have three here. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, how many hydrogens? Three times three is nine. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 plus 6, 23. And then how many oxygens? We have the one oxygen and we have a Br. So we see that these two have the same molecular formula. All right, so now let's do our line drawing to see if their connectivity is the same. So the first one is this carbon here, and it has three carbons. One, two, three, we call that branching. Then we go to the next carbon, and then we go to this carbon, and then we go to this carbon here. And this carbon has an oxygen, okay? 
in the mineral. So we're going to put that oxygen there, this lone pairs. And then we go to this carbon. And then we go to this carbon. That carbon has a Br on it. So put the Br on there. And then after that, we go to the next carbon. And that carbon has two carbons coming off of it, two branching. All right, we count. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, good. We have our oxygen and bromine. All right, so now we're going to do this one. We have three carbons. One, two, three. And they're all coming off of this carbon. So there's that one. And then we go to the next one here, carbon. And we go to this carbon. And then we go to this carbon. Okay, so let's go to this carbon. And you see that has an OH. So we're going to do our OH there. OH. And then we go to this carbon here. And then we go to this carbon. And then we put our BR there. And then we go to this carbon. And then this has two carbons coming off. One, two. All right, so let's see what we have here. Um, now keep in mind, we've got an issue here. I can tell already right here. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, this has a CH3. Okay, so there's your CH3. This has one carbon. Okay, so that carbon's got four bonds. That's good. Okay, this carbon here, the green carbon right here, it has one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so it, see, it only has three bonds. So it needs a double bond because it only has one hydrogen, one hydrogen. And then this yellow carbon only has one hydrogen. Okay. And then the black carbon here has one hydrogen. And then you go to this red one here, the CH2. This one has the carbon that's bonded to the chain. So this carbon's bonded to this carbon, and this carbon's bonded to this carbon. But then you have the Br, and then you have a hydrogen here. Okay? So make sure you get that double bond. Now, that's different. What's functional group is this? This is an alkyl halide. And this is also a ketone. Okay, if I was to name this, I would start from this end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Find my longest chain. 9 is no name. We'll drop the E and add no, no, known, nan, nan and own. Okay, so... Um, no name, and that's on carbon number five, so that's a ketone, and then you'll see that you have two, eight, eight, trimethyl, we'll learn how to do these, methyl, um, three, bromo, five, no name, no known, no known, no known, okay, here, this is, and we don't have one of these functional groups, but this is called an enol. I think, what does the donkey say? What does the donkey say? Does enol. En for en is an alkene. Remember, an alkene is carbon carbon double bond. And the ol is an alcohol. When you put them together, you have an enol. Okay? So they have the same molecular formula but they have different connectivity. They have different functional groups. So what are they? Okay. They are constitutional isomers. The connectivity is different. Okay, so I'm not going to work the last one. See, you can figure out how that's related to the other two. I do want to just go to your... Um, 
isomers in your book on page 80 through 82 and make sure that you understand these definitions. Okay, so whenever I'm, so isomers in your book, isomers are different compounds. Okay, they are different compounds. They're going to have the same molecular formula. So that's how you figure it out. You always do a molecular formula. Because they're different compounds, most of the times they have a different functional group. And you just saw, we saw a ketone and we saw an enol. Okay, or your ketone can be on a different carbon. What you're going to see is that they're going to have different physical properties, like boiling points and solubilities, and they're going to have different chemical reactions, different chemical properties. And so constitutional isomers, These are also called structural isomers. And um, they have different bonding patterns. Now the other isomers, so the first a flow chart, do the compounds have the same molecular formula? Okay, that's the question you want to ask. If the answer is no, they are different compounds, okay? If the answer is yes, they are isomers, but now you got to decide what type. So do they have different connectivity? That's the next question, okay? Question, question one, question two, different connectivity. If the answer is yes, then um, they are constitutional isomers. If the answer is no, for question number two, then um, they could be stereo isomers. Stereo isomers are on page 81 of your book. Stereoisomers differ only in how the atoms are bonded or connected in space. Okay, so your answer could either be a different compound or they can be constitutional isomers or they can be stereoisomers. And um, they give you an example of some stereoisomers. And so let's look at um, let's look at this formula. F two C C H two. Okay. So if we look at those if I was to do this, I would I would say, okay, then let's draw our condensed formula. The carbon has a, two fluorines on it. You could draw it like this. And then this carbon is connected to this carbon, and it likes four bonds. So we're going to make a double bond there and this here. We could also draw this like this. Okay. And we could also draw this like this. All right, so we have three compounds that have a correct Lewis structure. Now, how are these related to each other, these three compounds, compound A, B, and C? Well, they all have C2, H2, F2. So they all have the same molecular formula. Okay, so they are isomers. But what type of isomers? Um, well, this one, if you found the longest chain, you would say the longest chain of carbon is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and then you would see that this is a 1, 2 difluoro, and this is two carbons, ethene. This one is a 1, 1 difluoro, 
polyethylene, and this is a 1,2-difluoroethene. Okay, so they're the same um, functional group, the ene, which is an alkene, but this is uh, the 1,2 and the 1,2 have um, the same connectivity. Okay, see the 1,1 one, one means they're different connectivities. So this makes it a constitutional isomer. Makes it a constitutional isomer. Um, if you look over here, the 1, 2, and the 1, 2, how is A different from C? Well, do you see that the fluorines are on the same side? Now you do not have free, there's no free rotation on a carbon-carbon double bond. The carbon single bonds can easily rotate around itself. So you have a top and a bottom. You're going to see no rotation in rings and alkenes. And so this is where you're going to really see this stereoisomer. And you need to look for it when you get into alkenes and rings. We'll be talking about this in Chapter 7 and we'll revisit it. Right now I'm just showing you this as an example for a stereoisomer. So because these carbon-carbon bonds cannot ro freely rotate, you have a top and a bottom. The fluorines are your highest molecular weight compared to a hydrogen, and they're both on the same side. This makes it a cis if they're on the same side. This one here, you have this fluorine on the bottom, this one on the top, okay? They're opposite of each other, and that's trans, and these are stereoisomers. Okay, so these are examples of stereoisomers. You will look in your book and you'll see that you have cisbutene and transbutene. Um, you will find that stereoisomers have different boiling points. And the reason why they have different boiling points is if you had to assign electronegativity, the dipole moment, on the cis, the dipole goes towards the fluorine, the electronegative atom of 4.0, right? So this is your dipole moment. Now, if you sign the dipole moment for the trans, this is pulling this way and this is pulling this way, the dipole moment is zero. Zero D, D stands for Debye. Okay, so there's no dipole moment. This has zero. This one has greater than zero D. Okay, so this is more polar and it's going to have a higher uh, boiling point than your compound C. And so they have different physical properties and they can have different chemical properties. All right, so that takes care of isomerism. Now we're going to wrap up today's lecture with the resonance structures. So we're gonna do resonance structures. You're all welcome to take a break. I know this is a lot. We're gonna do the resonance structures and we're gonna look at Pogel too. Okay, so your resonance structures are um, on mm, what page? Uh, hmm, page 50 in your book. Okay, so going back to page 50 in your book has an introduction of resonance. So what does your book say? Um, so this is about drawing Lewis structures still. And some compounds are not... <clears throat> adequately represented by a single Lewis structure. When you have two or more valence structures are possible and they can differ in the placement, so we're talking about the placement of electrons, then we have to show, um, we have to show more than one structure to accurately um, tell you what the structure is. And these are called resonance structures or resonance forms and they're not different. They're not different compounds. We've been talking about different compounds. Isomers are different compounds, but these are the same compound, okay? And the actual compound is said to be a resonance hybrid of the compound. So let's look at um, what about this compound here? CH2NH2 plus. Okay, so if you had to draw the Lewis structure of this compound. So 
you would draw the carbon connected to two hydrogens, and that's connected to nitrogen with two hydrogens. Uh, what's its total valence electrons here? Carbon is in group four, and there's one. Nitrogen is group five, and there's one. And then you have hydrogen, and it's group one, and there's four of them. So that's four. You add this up. Um, 9, 10, 13, but then you have this positive charge for this overall molecule. So then you want to subtract an electron. So that means 12 valence electrons. Uh, we know that carbon likes four bonds, zero lone pair. And we know nitrogen likes three bonds with one lone pair. So we come over here to carbon and let's make carbon have four bonds. Okay, so then we're gonna have to make a double bond there. And then, um, and we gotta count our electrons, 12. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then we say, well, carbon has four bonds with zero lone pairs. We notice nitrogen is not going to be a neutral molecule, right? It's not our happy molecule here, our happy atom because it has four bonds. So we're like, well, we better do a formal charge for nitrogen. That's the group number minus dashes minus dots. So the group number for nitrogen is five. It has four bonds and it has zero dots, zero lone pairs, zero electrons. Five minus four is a plus one. So we put the plus on the nitrogen, which counts for the plus there. But this is not, you're missing the other resonance structure, okay? Because there's electrons here. These electrons are here. Now what's the hybridization? Hybridization of the carbon and the nitrogen. Well, carbon is bonded to three things, S, P, 2. So that took one S and two P orbitals and they combine to make two, three, three orbitals, okay? So if you take one S and you take two P orbitals and you combine them, you got three orbitals here and you make three more. Three orbitals in, three orbitals out. Uh, that has about a 66% P shape and a 33% S shape for an SP2 orbital. Okay, well, what did we leave out? We have an unhybridized P orbital. Okay, that's an unhybridized P. And this is where the electrons live. And that unhybridized P orbital is above and below. And those electrons are in this unhybridized P orbital. That's where those electrons reside. Okay? Now, nitrogen, that means nitrogen is also an sp2. So let's look at nitrogen. It has three things bonded, right? It has one, two, three. So that's sp2, and it too has this unhybridized p orbital. So the resonance structure, the correct resonance structure, or the correct Lewis structure would include, let's draw this over again since I wrote on it, the original one, and then we gotta move those electrons. The electrons, electrons, that are lone pair or pi bonds can move, okay? So when you're drawing resonance structures, if you have an sp or an sp2 atom, then look for resonance structures. Okay, because those electrons are the um, electrons, the resonance electrons, they're in unhybridized p orbitals, and they're the ones that can move. How do I know when I get a stopping point? Stop. When you get an sp3, that's like a roadblock. Okay, those electrons, I think of them as traveling down a wire. Those electrons cannot move to an sp3 atom. Okay, it's it, it doesn't have an unhybridized p orbital. So these electrons, you gotta learn how to draw these electron flow arrows. 
the, the electrons are negative. You probably know that, right? Negative. So negatives are attracted to positive. So these electrons will move to nitrogen. Okay, and then you redraw. And so now we have the carbon. All your atoms stay in the same place. So you draw all your sigma bonds all the same. But now we have these electrons here on the nitrogen. You also have to conserve your charge. Okay, so nitrogen now has three bonds, one lone pair. Okay, so it's it's neutral, it's fine. But what about carbon? What's carbon like? It likes four bonds and zero lone pairs. So this carbon here now has the formal charge of positive because you have to conserve the charge in a correct Lewis structure. Okay, so let's do the formal charge for carbon. Carbon is group four minus, in this case it has three dashes and zero dots. Okay, so therefore it's a positive one. Now this would be the correct Lewis structure. Notice this is a resonance arrow, folks. It's double-headed. That's going to be important. I've seen the ACS questions just ask for a resonance um, arrow. That's called a resonance arrow. All right, so that's an example. Okay, let's try a couple more examples, and then we'll look at your Pogel activity. Okay, um, what about, you all uh, probably have done sodium bicarbonate. Okay, so Na, um, let's just do sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate, Ca3, right? So let's do Ca, CO3 2 minus. Okay, what's the Lewis structure of that compound? Well, carbon is the central and it has three oxygens. How many valence electrons? Carbon has four in group number four. Oxygen has six and there's three, so that's 18. Four plus 18 is 22. You have a two minus, so we're going to add two more electrons to that. We have 24 valence electrons. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And so we have those. Notice you have two minus. You can quickly see that carbon doesn't have a charge here. This oxygen is fine because it has two bonds and two lone pairs. But obviously this oxygen gets a negative and this oxygen gets a negative. We can do this formal charge for oxygen. It's group six minus the dashes, which is one minus one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six dots. Six minus one is five. Five minus six is a negative one. And so there shows your um, one structure. But this isn't correct because you need to show how these electrons, do you see how the electrons are a lone pair? So you have these lone pair. That means they're in an unhybridized p orbital. Okay, that's an unhybridized p orbital that can, and this is a pi bond. Okay, so pi bonds can move those electrons. So these electrons can move to make a new pi bond. So you have a lone pair that becomes a pi bond. At the same time, the pi bond becomes a new lone pair. And this is how you draw resonance. you got to show those arrows. Um, so those electrons, and then you draw your sigma bonds just the same. Sigmas don't change, okay? So this stays the same. And then these go up here. And then there's where your negative charge. And then this oxygen as well. So you can draw another one. And these pi bonds can now go here. The lone pair goes to a pi bond. Um, and, well, in that case, you'd have to go back to that. So you could draw, you could just draw it. Um, or you can redraw it however you want. But to get a correct Lewis structure, 
you should show where every one of these are represented. Okay, so now all three of these. So each oxygen gets a double bond and the actual Lewis structure is a hybrid of one of these. Okay, and so that's why you have resonance structures. Um, you'll notice that the carbon and oxygen are sp2 hybridized okay so let's look at that this carbon here is bonded to three things one two three okay so that makes it sp2 two plus one is three so sp2 can participate in resin structure now you might want to look at one of these oxygen and go one you might want to go one, two, three, four. And you might be tempted to do an SP3 for that oxygen. But that's not right because if um, you have lone pairs next to an SP2 atom, it will be SP2. And you're going to see that rule over and over again because resonance always dominates. It is a thermodynamic sink. It's a driving force. It really stabilizes uh, thermodynamically. And so those electrons here will participate in resonance. And the only way that those lone pairs can participate in resonance, meaning the lone pair becomes a pi bond, a new pi bond, it has to have an unhybridized p orbital. And the unhybridized p orbital has to be in a, either an sp2 or an sp. We describe hybridization for the real molecule. Okay, remember methane, it came out of methane uh, with the CH4 and it had the sp3 came out to, to justify the 109.5 degree bond angles, not 90 degree bond angles. Okay, so the reality of the molecule is that it does have 109.5 degree bond angles. So sp3 is a way that we use hybridization to, dis to describe using words the geometry that we observe. So resonance is something that is observed. And let me just tell you, if there's lone pairs next to an sp2 carbon or an sp, or an S of any kind of element, carbon or nitrogen or oxygen, it will participate in resonance and therefore you do not count those as a thing and that oxygen, each one of these oxygens are sp2 and so is the carbon. All right, so let's, I promised you another example. Let's do acetic acid, so let's do CH3CO2 minus. Okay, so if you were to draw the resonance structures of these, you would draw carbon with its three hydrogens here, and this carbon is connected to an oxygen, and that one's connected to an oxygen, and then, then you would want to count up all your total valence electrons. So we have two carbons. Carbon is four times two is eight, and then we have oxygen. We have six. Group six times two is 12. And then we have hydrogen, which is group 1 times 3 is 3. And so that's um, 23. But then we have a minus 1, so we're going to add an electron. And that's 24 valence electrons. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, and that's where your minus is going to be because oxygen um, likes two bonds plus two lone pairs. Okay, this is acetic acid with the loss of its acidic proton. Okay, so this is a correct structure and this would be an acetate ion. Now, this is just one of the resonance structures because you see that this lone pair here is next to a carbon 
is sp2 hybridized. So that carbon has one, two, three things. It's sp2. You have a pi bond there. And so these electrons, that means this car oxygen is also sp2. So these are all sp2 atoms. And so that means the electrons can go here to form a, so we have a um, lone pair that's going to go and form a new pi bond. And then we have to break the pi bond because we have to obey the um, octet rule and make a new lone pair. So then those electrons will go there. Do we have to worry about this carbon over here? What's its hybridization? sp3. Okay, it doesn't have any lone pairs. It cannot, it's a roadblock. Okay, there are no electrons coming over here. There's no unhybridized p orbital. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's draw our resonance arrows and draw our new structure. We keep our sigma bonds there. And we got here, we got a new sigma bond, a new pi bond. And then those electrons go here. And now the negative charge is on the oxygen. We have conservation of charge. We have two structures. Okay, so that's a true representation of a Lewis structure for the acetate. Now that is an anion example. Let me give you a cation example. Okay, a cation example would be, let's do this, CH2, CH, 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 CH2, positive. Okay, so let's draw this Lewis structure. We'll start with this carbon. It has two hydrogens, and then it's bonded to this carbon. This carbon has one hydrogen. It's bonded to this carbon. This carbon has one hydrogen. It's bonded to this carbon has one hydrogen and then it's bonded to this carbon which has two hydrogen. Now we know that um, carbon likes two bonds so we have one, two, three. If we put a double bond in there now that carbon has one, two, three, four. This carbon has one, two, three, four and this carbon so one, two, three, four. This carbon has one, two, three. We put another double bond in there. Now we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. One of them has a positive charge. Okay. So I'm going to put the positive charge there because that carbon only has three bonds. We'll check our um, electron valence too. So it only has three bonds, zero lone pair. So if you do the formal charge on carbon, you'd see that it's group four minus three minus zero is a plus one, which accounts for that positive. Let's figure out if I told the valence electron. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. And carbon is group number four times five is 20. And then we have how many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is group number one times one um, times seven of them. So seven. That's 27, and we have to subtract an electron because it has a positive charge. So that's 26 valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So we do have a good structure. Now, this is not the only because we have to consider resonance structures. Okay? So, um, this carbon here, let's look at the first carbon. What's the hybridization of each one? So the first carbon is bonded to one, two. That means these pi electrons can go, and pi electrons, see, so pi electrons can go to other pi electrons. Okay, we can have lone pairs that can go to, uh, to make pi bonds. And so what we have here is we have a cation example. And the negative electron, which is in the pi bond, will go towards the positive charge. Okay, so these electrons will form, we will go from a pi bond to a new pi bond. 
And so if we do our elect our resins arrow, which I'm gonna make it really big here in the green, then we redraw everything. C H. Okay, just the same. Now we have something going on right here. We have our sigma bonds here. But now we have this new bond, this new pi bond here. And then it left this carbon, so there's your positive now. Okay, you have to conserve the charge. You had a positive here, you have to have a positive there. Okay, so the pi bond here, we can do another one. Okay, so we can also do another Lewis structure where this pi bond goes towards the positive because electrons are attracted to the positive, and then we redraw. And we have all of our um, sigma bonds that don't break, don't move. And this um, is not the point of reactivity here, so that stays the same. But as you can see, this pi bond here is going to make a new pi bond in our structure here. So there's the one going towards the blue. And now we have this carbon gets the positive charge. Okay, so there are three structures, Lewis structures, to represent the correct structure here. It's like a hybrid. Um, so we have to draw all legitimate Lewis structures of such ions, and it's the average. Now, if you read in your book, not all resonance structures are equal, okay? So there are majors, and there's minor contribution, contributors. And so if you read your rules, you will need to memorize those rules. So we're going to, um, this video is long, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to stop there at page 52 about the major and minor contributors, and we're going to finish up resonance structures for your POGOL 2, and we're going to work that um, in lecture 4.